Hello, this is me, Sam QF Group Gaming, and today we're doing a sort of like interview um, how to develop for Bucket. And today we've got George or Pokewit, who is a well versed Bucket uh, and Java developer working for TBNR, uh, which is a server. So we're just going to go through a few questions. You want to say hello, first of all? Hello. 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 That's always good. <laughs> and we're just going to ask a few questions and sort of give you an insight and some advice on how to start developing for Bucket as well as uh, what to do once you're fully uh, well known with it and little tips. So I guess the first question is, how would you start developing for well, Bucket and Java? Well, I'd probably, um, as Java as a whole, I'd probably, uh, first of all, um, make sure that you start with something easier as a language. Don't dive straight into Java as it is quite complex. I learn something a web-based language, for example, Java, uh, Flash, ActionScript, if you have to. Um, so, uh, with Bucket as a whole, I, I recommend uh, you just research and look at uh, Wiki. They have a really nice uh, plugin Wiki to get started with Bucket. Yeah. So, you would learn some sort of, maybe some object-orientated mm. programming first. I mean, the way I learned was just, well, just by doing it, really, and just trying out new things and Mm. making little plugins and stuff. That's the best way. You just want to try. It's, it's all about um, when you're starting off, it's trial and error. Don't be afraid to make about 100 different projects just to test out different features um, because there are some uh, really amazing effects you can do in Minecraft with Bucket uh, yeah. that you may find fun to do. Yeah, definitely. And what would be some good resources to use? Like just to... Um, well, with Bucket, Bucket Wiki, um, again, like I said, Java Docs, which are, they document every single thing done in Bucket uh, as it's been developed. And it's not the nicest thing to look at, but it really has a lot of technical information about it. Um, if you have a really big problem that you really can't sort out, Bucket Forums, they will help you and it's really good. Um, and if you want really quick information, then Bucket IRC, um, which is literally just you can ask a question, and there's lots of really good devs that can answer it, including the people who actually make Bucket and craft Bucket, so they can really help you out. Uh, yeah, definitely. I'll provide some links in the description to all these resources to use. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some good resources there. Um, when you're sort of starting a plugin, how would you best organize it? Well, I'd organize it with, um, first of all, obviously, you have the main plugin class. Then you will probably, uh, you do, don't want to have listeners in your main plugin class um, because what ends up happening, especially with big projects, let's say a mini game, you could have, let's say, a thousand listeners in your main plugin class, which is just stupid and you won't be able to organize or see anything. Yeah, I see. And would, when you like first designing it, I guess, you, would it be best to not just dive in or plan it out first? Uh, yes. Uh, you've got yeah. a structure, again, like you were saying, plan it. Um, make a little document, uh, make some documents of your own, just uh, all the different points that you want to implement and tick them off as you're going along. Um, because the worst thing that can happen, really, is you're halfway through a project and you don't know what to do or you've kind of just lost inspiration and you don't have is best if you have a list because then you know what you need to do and what you have to do in that sense. Yeah, I see. Also, I like a side note, how would you, um, are you there's obviously you can use like GitHub and stuff. How, how do you personally develop? Like, do you use any um, uh, subversioning or well, anything like well, that? Personally, I use uh, GitHub. For I uh, do many open source projects, but especially for my team, uh, we use GitHub um, to develop, and it's good because you can kind of contribute with each other and work on things at the same time. Um, we use a thing called Maven for all our dependencies. Um, it practically handles all your dependencies, and you can import them really easily. Um, as tons of other benefits other than that, but um, those are probably the two major things that we use in that sense. Right, so GitHub and Maven. Mm. I'll provide links for those two as well. Okay, so what makes a good plugin like code-wise? Um, again, <laughs> structure it as well. Um, make everything um, 
managed and don't don't make it overflowing uh really because if you can't read your code then it's not going to be good if you want to go back and change something always make it readable always add comments um just make sure that you think about each thing that you're adding don't just do it immediately because otherwise you may be doing inefficiently and there's loads of other things um just going back to resources that i use i also use um a thing called intellij which is um, like Eclipse, it's just I personally find it better. You may find Eclipse better. Um, it depends. Right. I, do, I, do, I have tried out IntelliJ and didn't really get used to it, so mm. I've, I've stuck with Eclipse. But yeah, mm. yeah. Okay, I, I was, I was, I read a book actually, um, Effective Java, huh. and it do, it tells you to write everything as if you were writing an API. Would that be useful when developing plugins? Definitely, because if you're writing something as an API and trying to uh, make it like an API, then you have some really easy methods which you can use. And if you can use those methods while you're programming, then it makes it easier. For example, if we wanted to add a player to a array list, but we also at the same time want to give them visibility, we might have a add player method or um, add invisible player kind of uh, thing. You don't want... Um, again, uh, uh, with code also to clear it up, um, have methods. If you're ever repeating anything more than, uh, more than once, uh, like, um, uh, anything at all, put it in a method, uh, because it will really clean up your code. And also right. name your methods well, because if you don't name them well, you might have something called Z1, and then you're just like, what does that do? Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. That's it. I know. I know. I, I always. I almost like sort of write everything in Z's and one single letters <laughs> at max two. I really should stop doing that. Oh no! I know the feeling. Um, I sometimes do that a bit dodgily, but I think what you gotta try and do is um, there's a thing called camo case. Um, camo case. Uh, camo case is practically a, a way of naming your variables. Uh, for example, um, if you're naming a local variable. Uh, let's call it cake or oh, actually no it needs to be two words let's say Jaffa cake uh, your name right. Jaffa will all be lowercase and then cake the first letter of cake will be uppercase and the rest of cake will be lowercase um, you can look it up online uh, that's a good name convention also for naming classes always make them uppercase all the uh, words in them um, and constants like for example if you were having pi um, in your programming, um, then make it all uppercase. And uh, if you have a space, use an underscore. Yeah. So constants will be uppercase. Mm. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. So there's there's yeah. tons of um, camo case is just the first one, but there's tons of different things. Um, uh, there's a really good uh, Java convention um, online. I think it's on Oracle's website, uh, which I can probably give you the link for. Sure, I'll provide a link in the description. With everything we're talking about, I'll just provide links. There'll be a big list of them, I guess, when we're done. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so coding conventions. So I'll provide a link for that. Okay, cool. Um, next question is uh, how to best store information? So if you've got like a plugin which stores, I don't know, login events or data about player, how would you store this information? Well, um, at first, if it was a really small amount of information, like really, really small, um, little, little things, like for example, you were setting three points for your, or let's say 10 points for your whole plugin, um, and you were doing a thing called caching that information when you got it, um, then right. use a data.yml, um, which is practically, it's like a config.yml, uh, which um, is obviously for data. Bucket has a nice uh, configuration API, which you can use. They, again, on their wiki, really nice uh, documentation on it. I see. Um, and what, and it, what about for large? If it's if it's much larger, for example, a hundred plus, or you're storing player names and their rank and their score, etc., uh, use a database. For example, MySQL, uh, different SQL databases. 
Um, personally, I recommend MongoDB, uh, which I find is much more efficient. But again, if you feel more comfortable with SQL, use that. I see. Also, another question, actually. Is it best to, like, update these databases in real time or update it as a cache and then every so often update the database, like, every five minutes from this cache? Well, with SQL, it works plainly just with queries. So you query something. Again, you don't want to do too many queries. Now, that's the problem with SQL. Yeah. But um, with saving things, you probably want to... Uh, it's the same thing. You probably want to wait till uh, when every 20 minutes or so and save it. Because if you're doing it every time it updates, that database is changing every, you know, let's say if you have 500 players online, it's changing every uh, second. And that is not yeah. good for when you need to access it and it will lag the database. All right, okay. Okay, uh, next question is avoiding using primitives, so like strings and stuff. Uh, it's a point you put on one of our previous plugin tutorial videos. Would you like to explain a bit about that, I guess? Um, yes. Uh, with strings, um, primitives are things like strings, integers, floats, um, just basic things that are provided by Java when, you know, they're just plain Java. Um, now, with these, you don't really want to have them in your code. Um, like, let's say uh, you ha had a command and you wanted a feedback. Um, that command has been completed successfully. You don't want to feed back exactly that. What you probably want to do is have a thing called an enum and uh, have the uh, string in that. Or you can have it in a config that you can um, give to the server owner because, the, um, uh, because that allows them to customize what strings are sent to the player um, or again like an enum um, where so you want to centralize all your strings because if you don't then if you want to change them at a later point you've got to search through your code and you want to make it as easily maintainable as possible your code for anyone and you want to make it so a new developer can just come along and read it all um, and uh, again documentation on uh, what you're doing um, also uh, the reason you don't want to have strings in your code is um, if you have strings in your code and it's not clear and uh, you also it, um, if you're repeating a string multiple times um, then that string is taken you know take up uh, memory space even though it's something as small as a string it's still taking out memory space so by caching it into an enum that saves memory space there's loads of other reasons not to use primitives but those are kind of the main ones in that sense yeah definitely thank you very much for that explanation I think that's covered it pretty <laughs> well thank you um, just final question any advice you can give any other that we haven't covered okay uh, yeah. um, plainly just don't work on a plugin that you don't feel inspired by. Don't think, oh, I think I'm going to make a plugin which does this, or um, this person wants this plugin, but I don't really want to do it, uh, kind of thing. Because in programming, inspiration is key, and you've got to have the inspiration to go out there and program that plugin. And really, if you have that inspiration, you will try your hardest. If you don't, then you're going to make a rubbish plugin, and it's not going to be good. And it's really... It's all about inspiration, and I recommend you get yourself on projects that you feel inspired by. I see. Yeah, definitely enjoy what you're doing and, yeah, have mm. that inspiration. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I think that concludes today's uh, sort of interview thing. It's been about 15 minutes long. So mm. thank you very much, uh, George, or Pokeriot, however I'd like to say it. <laughs> it's been very beneficial, and I'll, well, I'll sort this out and uh, upload it. So thank you very much. It's been me, Sam here of Root Gaming, signing out.